How are you laundry? So <laughs> this is all very suspicious. This he says the night of the nineteenth, but it has to be the night of the twentieth. He stayed out. Oh, he stayed out all night of the nineteenth and then the twentieth because this would be yeah, that makes sense actually. Because then he got Alice, so he would got the he would got them before eleven a.m. the adults, and then he would have gotten Alice later on, or Emily, the little girl, later on in the afternoon. Okay, that makes sense. But she, but she would have been alive till the afternoon. Alice right. got off the bus. She was seen coming home on the bus. So maybe he just which that's so yeah. Either that or this guy's got the night mixed up. The father-in-law. That's the only other possibility. Um, so September twenty-third, um, nineteen ninety-one, Hightower called Christine, her sister. You know, we went to get ransom money for, uh, from, and uh, at her home, and she also called Christine's husband at his office. He told them. Not to worry about raising any money because I got this taken care of. I've taken care of everything and I've arranged for a return of both of our families to their rightful places. All good, no harm, no foul. Um, please, no more contact with the authorities that. because that's only going to fucking foul the deal. So, chill on that. Call him back and tell him just kidding. We got it. <laughs> I got it totally. The same day, he forged yeah, a check in Alice Brendel's name uh, in the sum of $1,500 payable to himself. So, he also, he also mailed the National Futures Association and Commodities Futures Trading Commission a letter signed by Ernest, quote unquote, and written on stationery bearing his letterhead, Ernest, containing a statement withdrawing the complaint against Christopher Hightower. <laughs> That is fucking amazing. He really um, wants to trade commodities. That's he really does. Thing. He's like, I'll kill everybody to trade for fucking frozen orange juice. I have to do it. So the police, you know, they know about missing people and everything. They came over to the Brendel family house about 11 a.m. that morning. Yeah, no one was home. They knocked on the door. That's they came to the door. Mean. The detective checked the garage area and found a portion of it had recently been washed down and swept. And then he observed a wet area around and rooms that were still wet in the garage. So it's been cleaned Round recently. Like, it's still wet for Christ's sake. So uh, the police then issued a broadcast to everybody, to, not to the public, but to themselves, to if you see Christopher Hightower driving Shock around in an 88 red Toyota, Level go ahead and grab him and fucking pull him over and find some way, find something to hold on. He's got a trunk full of blood. If that's still there, just you know, suspicion, just grab him. So the vehicle then uh, is stopped in the parking lot of the St. John's Church on County Road, and Christopher's driving. Um, on his person are found credit cards belonging to Ernest Brindle, and uh, also a white Shield powder covering here. the entire rear section of the vehicle. Like the whole back seat is covered in a white powder, and mm. uh, also what appears to be copious amounts of blood, according to the police report, yeah. in the car and in the, in the trunk and everything like that. Then the sergeant noticed a large bag of lime on the floor in the rear of the vehicle, which would be where all the powders come, comes from. He's just got a half a bag of lime in the car. He's the worst mob guy ever. Just ever. He's got it behind him in the back seat like it's groceries. It's not ice cream you got on the way home. It's <laughs> I realize that shit is useful in a lot of different applications, but the only time I've ever heard it applied is in the box. Yeah. Well, you've never had a half a bag of it just carried in the back seat of your car behind your seat. That's the thing. That's one of those you buy if you need it for a garden or whatever the fuck it's yeah. used for. You buy it at like Home Depot, put it in your trunk, take it home, and then put it in your fucking garage or whatever. And then you throw it away. You know, you're not like, I'll keep that in my car unless in case I need it for later. So he's got that. Uh, tons of blood. He's taken to the police station. The vehicle's totally obviously. Um, on him, he has fifteen hundred dollars of cash as well. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh? And uh, his wallet contained three Level three. Uh, obviously, you know, there. And um, also, they noticed uh, just a large bag, a half empty large bag of lime on the floor. In addition to that, they also found once they got into the, into the police garage and searched it thoroughly. Several teeth. Shield battery here. Four to be exact. Um, a half empty bag of lime. A bear devastator crossbow as well. Um, blood type is O, which is the same type as one of blood. One of the teeth is identified as his, and the rest are Alice's. Sniper stock here. Level the evidence uh, here were sent to the FBI lab and everything like that. Um, the police captain said we had held out hope right to the end to come up with this end result. Uh, to come up with especially when it involves an eight-year-old girl stuff to deal with. We all have families. They don't know where they are, but they know they've, they're missing teeth and a shitload of blood, and there's lime in the car, so that's not a good sign. Yeah, not good um, by the way, the letter to the uh, to the commission was found to have been printed on the Brendel's computer on September 22nd, was the day after they disappeared. So he went back to the house, hung out, wrote a letter. You know he ate, ate food there. You know he ate a sandwich. Yeah. So while he's in custody. They found all this shit. He's charged with driving a stolen car in possession of a weapon and torture. Shotgun bolt here. So, um, the, one of the librarians, by the way, who knew uh, Alice said, quote, I think he cracked. His personal and professional life was coming apart and something inside him just snapped. That's what, that, that's the, that's what everyone in town is saying. Holy shit, this guy was snap snap here. Snap here. So they give him his, you know, his uh, Miranda rights and all that sort of deal. And, um, he tells he tells the police that he had inflated the amount of the ransom. He still says that the mafia kidnapped them. He's sticking, he's, with, it. He's sticking with that. He's well. He changes it to it's not the mafia anymore. He's, you'll see he adjusts that. He says, but he was he inflated it. They only wanted two hundred grand. My only crime here is to try to get three hundred grand because he wanted to keep hundred grand for himself to help him with his financial problems. Otherwise, yeah, he's I'm doing large work. I'm just yeah. care of I gotta get a finder's fee here. Um, he made statements that he hid uh, in his office at, in his, his uh, father-in-law's home. There, he had a sawed-off shotgun and an automatic handgun as well. Um, they asked him. He also said there's a large amount of blood in the back of the car that he washed out of the car as well. He said he did that in the garage. That's why he was the garage. He said he's having marital problems. He stayed at the Brendel residence the night of September 19th and 20th. And then that's when he was still alive. And he stayed at his office on September 21st. For night. So um, he, he signed a statement saying all this. Um, he said that they, they go back over with him and all that sort of shit. He, at at 4 a.m., the sergeant says that he's going to go out and check some tire tracks that have been observed near, you know, around this area, right? For him to possibly have buried the bodies. So Hightower responds by saying, quote, Sarge, you're wasting your time. They're not buried there. Call me an attorney for the morning. After talking to the attorney, if he says it's all right, I'll talk to you. So in other words, don't waste your fucking time at 4 a.m. I'll tell you where the bodies are tomorrow, is basically what he says. So the next morning, a public defender comes over to see him, and now he's not saying shit about anything. He won't say where they are. Um, now, at this point, too, there's like yellow ribbons, and people have been gone, you know, three days, and people have, it's, you know, crazy. We've got signs 10 up, seconds you know, to get in the ring. Ultimate's off cool November down. November 7, 1991, Catherine Who wants McCoy, to shield battery here? In the area, Barrington. She's thresh. walking her dogs over here to St. Andrews Middle School two months ago in Barrington. One of the dogs ran into bushes and wouldn't come back when she was calling. An obedient dog wouldn't come. Um, so she followed the dog and found the dog sniffing and pawing at an area where there were two depressions in the ground along with a small amount of white powder. Being delivered. So this lady had gardening experience and she Looks started, like a new, care package is coming in. So she Big thought it was lying. She saw the depressions. Put two and two together. She has seen good fellas. Yeah. And
all three of them together. Ernest died as a result of two arrow wounds to the chest. Jesus. Arrow wounds to the chest. Died from wounds inflicted by an arrow to the chest. Alice Brendel was strangled, and they couldn't find the exact cause of Emily at that time. It's okay, it's undetermined. She just had her, her, right? her skull had problems. Oh, or, no. it's, it's multiple things is the issue. Um, they said that snapped off arrows and arrow heads were found in Ernest Brendel's chest and buttocks. And uh, Alice Brendel was apparently strangled with a cloth that was knotted around her neck. Is this motherfucker? Yeah, this is horrific. Um, Vicious. They this said, oh no, Emily was the one because Alice had problems with her, with her skull as well. They said in Emily's case, there was no apparent Believe visible signs of injury to her body. Good. So that was, yeah. yeah, there was no, um, no sexual assault, no, Good. so I, we don't know what happened to Alice. Right. Right. So there were apparently, um, with, uh, uh Ernest, there were non-fatal fractures of the skull, lacerations of the scalp, and of course, arrow wounds all fucking over. Buttocks, legs, chest, back. Clearly the target. Yeah, clearly the target. So, um, it's, it's brutal, man. Um, they said the cause of Emily Brendel's death could not be determined to a reasonable degree of medical certainty. So it's still unknown in the, in the I, thing. I so, don't want to know the whole no, thing. That's, that we don't know. Uh, well, we know he didn't do certain things, so at least that's helpful. Uh, the FBI, ab uh, FBI laboratory analyst said that samples taken from about two dozen items in and around the Brendel's garage tested positive for the presence of human blood. They found blood in five places on the cross that killed Brendel, and she was unable to make a comparison because there was no usable samples of Brendel's blood to take. So they said at that point you still needed a lot for DNA comparison. You need to have like a half a gallon or some shit. You need to basically drain somebody like a deer to be able to do any testing. So, that around. Yeah, they also go said ahead. that the letter withdrawing the complaint against Hightower was made, printed on their computer and it was made by and pasting letters that Brendel had previously typed, like a fucking psychopath ransom letter. Unbelievable. Unreal. So immediately they say they want to stop the rumors. The uh, police, there's a Rhode Island State police official that holds a press conference and says that, quote, they were not dismembered. Because everybody, there's all these rumors that Emily was mutilated oh, and all this God. shit. So they said they were not dismembered, the bodies were not mutilated, nor did the bodies appear to have been dipped in acid or had acid poured over their bodies. These were all rumors that were floating around. You involved the fucking mob. Goddamn. Really? Yep, like, goddamn mafia. He said, I only say this to dispel some of the rumors and wild stories that are going around around Barrington. There were a lot of concerns from school children in Barrington over the acid theory. Hopefully this will help some of the school children and parents over there in any kind of small way. So yeah, I would say so. So this is obviously fucking horrific. Um, they, uh, um, one of the people here says, um, I, I said three weeks ago they're all dead and they're out of their misery. No matter what happened, no matter how utterly horrible it was for them, it's over. This is Emily's one of the uh, uncles here. He said, I had to do, I, I had to do that for my own sake. I assume I had to assume they're dead. I had to. Yeah, you don't want to go through So. Yikes, man. This is, um, wow. And they said another friend of uh, Hightower said, quote, people just don't understand this one. How could this have happened? This is the executive well, director of the East Bay Mental Health Center. Uh, so Mr. Hightower seemed like one of the pillars of the community. How could someone present that image and then acted this complete opposite Let's way? Who do you trust is what people want to know. Oh, nothing. So when the bodies are found, he's put under suicide watch because he starts acting awfully Met fucking crazy. Um, right obviously, here. Jesus Christ, it's getting really bad. I think he, uh, he's also attacking the jail. He's indicted on a murder panel. His case, this is what he presents to is that he witnessed the murders. They tied him to a chair and made him watch the murders of this whole family, okay? In his words, it is organized crime, but not the mafia. It was, quote, four men, no women, both two of whom were Latinos and two of whom were Orientals. Asian Latino gangs got together to kill families and make completely unrelated people who happen to handle some minor financial matters for one of the people watching or something like his family's fine. They're not murdered, so that, you know, they weren't kidnapped, his family. So, um, yeah, this is fucking ridiculous, obviously. And he also presented a case of insanity. Basically, oh, he also said he was forced to dig graves. Yeah, they made him do it. That's why he was there. That was his point. The Kyoto Hefe is, is yeah, very dangerous. Too. Very, yeah, it's, it's obvious. Yeah, that's how it works. Kim John Chan Sanchez is a really hard guy to please. So you don't want to fucking do it. Because I have nothing to do with this, and they're making me do awful things. And it was like basically like, listen, I didn't do it, but if I did, it's because I'm crazy. That's his defense. <laughs> so, yeah, he also wanted to have a separate trial on each of the three murder counts, and a separate trial on that on the kidnapping count to Emily as well. And they said, no, no, it's all one thing. You buried them in the same hole. It's all one thing, asshole. So, yeah, um, the trial comes along here, and uh, two-pronged attack, like I said, innocence by reason, innocence and innocence because he's crazy. Both of us, he's one of those completely against each other. He said he has multiple personality disorder now, which that's never come up before. Um, he testifies over six days. Imagine you cross-examining this idiot. That'd be a fucking ball to cross-examine this guy. As smart as he is, he's an idiot. You know what I mean? He said the monsters forced him to bury the family and warned him they would kill his wife and two sons if he didn't cooperate. He said that members of an Asian organized crime group uh, killed the family over because Ernest stole millions of dollars that they were trying to launder through him from the heroin trade. And I know all this, but I didn't say where yeah. to no, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it was a grande. Yeah, it's a grande. So the jury, when they're done laughing at him, they say guilty <laughs> of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here are the counts here. Um, torture and aggravated battery for murder of Ernest Brendel, murder of Alice Brendel, kidnapping of Emily Brendel, child under 16, murder of Emily Brendel, breaking into and entry of the Brendel garage, entry of the Brendel dwelling without commit, uh, with intent to commit larceny, forging and counterfeiting a negotiable instrument with the intent of fraud, and unlawful burial in violation of the law. That's 11 counts altogether. In sentencing, Christopher says, I've suffered as well. You know, that's not what you say to the judge when they're sentencing you. You say, I've done horrible things and feel bad. You don't go, I've suffered just as much. He said, in addition to that suffering, this is a quote, I've also experienced the nightmares of the Brendel's deaths. Their deaths are certainly a tragedy, but it's not the biggest tragedy here. The fact that there is a large drug ring still operating today, that's the biggest tragedy. Holy shit, there's people dealing drugs, Your Honor. Fucking Old. The judge said that it was, quote, a very simple task to give him the maximum sentences. He said, I've never in my extensive legal career seen such evil in a crime as this. You, sir, may fuck off. It is, let's see here. Count one, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Count two, life to be served consecutively with count one. Not concurrent. Count three, to be served uh, is life imprisonment to be served consecutively to one and two. Count four, life imprisonment without parole to be, to be served consecutively to the sentences of one, two, and concurrently with three. So still three. Three life without he's got so far in a row. And then ten years imprisonment for five, six, seven, and eight. So that's another 40 years. And then five years apiece on three counts of burial and also a fine of $10,000 each on that. And then all of that to be served consecutively by and everything else. It's three life sentences plus 100 years plus, you know, they're going to kick his corpse and like piss on it when he's done. 
1993, the family Shut sues the YMCA for letting fucking Emily go with him. Good. Thankfully there. And then he's been a total dick in prison. He got beaten up in prison. He's been, had to be transferred all around. Uh, one guy here said, uh, this is a guy who interviewed him, one of the mental health people yeah. after he retired. He said, quote, he would give you the creeps. No humanity at all. You look into their eyes, you don't see a soul. There's just nothing there. It's just hardcore evil personified. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, he um, also here. sued them in Roll 2012 and 13. He's been suing the prison Roll system. He's in Illinois now. He's been suing, shit. been suing like crazy over all sorts of different shit. He was on World's Most Evil Killers. I didn't Reloading. know that. And also, the con man murderer. Oh, that was the episode of World's Most Evil Killers. That, everybody, was Barrington, Rhode Island. That's crazy. One of the worst people to ever exist, man. a huge people. Well, he has no, like, he's like, I didn't do it. The worst part of it is there's yeah. a drug ring out. He's Man's like, you know, OJ, look at the real killer. Like, yeah. The best part about it is that he's completely incompetent and can't do this a lot. Otherwise, yeah. this would be a oh, yeah. fucking dangerous man. Oh, he could do this at will. An eight-year-old yeah. girl? I mean, Jesus, you could do that. He could do shit. anything. If you like that, tell the world. Give us five stars. Whatever app you're listening on. Those reviews help drive us up the charts. They really do help the show. So thank you for those. Uh, follow us on social media. We're at Murder Small on Twitter. That's Murder Small. Facebook at Small Town. Yeah. Instagram. Shut up and give me murder.com is the website. Get all your merchandise. Get your tickets for live shows. Yeah. Damn it, we're in Milwaukee at the Paps. That's the big one that we're doing. Can't wait for that. September the 10th. Get your Sports, anybody five dollars or above, all the bonus stuff this week. The scandals of Michael Jordan, affairs, it. fucking gambling, it's conspiracy ugly. theories, paternity suits, giant divorces, small town murder bonus is gonna be all sorts of reviews, people's weird reviews. You wanna find out about a goddamn IKEA in the middle of Kansas? We'll talk about it probably. Who knows? Come through, check it out, patreon.com slash rhyme sports. Keep coming back for more. Thank you so much, everybody, and until next week, it's been our pleasure. Giving him the chimney. Like our show, please give us a five-star rating and review. Episodes small time are available free wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to hear new episodes one week early, you can download Amazon Music, or if you want to hear new episodes early and at free, subscribe right to Wondery Plus and Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Another way you can support our show is by filling out a survey at Wondery.com slash survey. This muscle down. action star ran a jewelry theft from a teenager in Hawaii. How did a critically acclaimed actor get chewed out by the public and the police for a scandalous cannibalism kick? And which heiress turned actress found herself firing the sub machine gun she's kidnapped by a terrorist organization? These are just a few of the questions I'll answer on an all-new season of Badlands. A true crime podcast hosted by me, Jake Brennan, that dives into the real stories of the famous at their most infamous. With new episodes every Wednesday, I dive deeper into the notorious characters of Tinseltown than ever before, featuring the insane true stories of John Belushi, Army Hammer, Charlie Chaplin, Lucille Ball, Bob Crane of Hogan's Heroes, Patty Hearst, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. For all this and more, listen to Badlands wherever you get your podcasts. Or binge the entire new season right now, only on Amazon News. An Evo shield here, level three. Backpack here, level three. Medkit here, pop and smoke. Replicator being delivered. Medkit here. Replicator coming in. <laughs> Giving him the chimney. Round three, beginning in in countdown. I'm coming in. Reposition here. Smoke out. Shotgun bolt here. Level three. Look at the chart. We're spread too thin. Doc will keep on reviving you, even if I have to go. Med kit here. Med kit here. Got an Evo shield here. Level three. Shield battery here. Med kit here. Evo shield here. Level 3. Reloading. I'm spotted. Taking fire. <laughs> Reloading. Just giving my shields a recharge. Three Stay legends two. left. Let's make this next kill a duet. One more down. 
Is this supposed to be hard? Enemy on the scene. Grenade, beat it! Shoot him! Listen up, I'm getting shot at! Those are killed. Get off my stage. One creep still creeping around here somewhere. Squad dropped. 